All right, guys, welcome back to the sixth week of our project development course in the programming language of Python. We have made it to the one and a half month mark, got a bunch of fun going on at the same time as well with our new Zoom video filters. And as you guys remember, last week we finished our mastermind project. We had a bunch of fun making that. We played it a bunch of times too, and even did a uh, algorithmic programming problem about it, that idea of abstraction this past Monday as well. If you want to check out what we did, you can always check out our YouTube videos and the channel as well. But today we're going to be moving on towards a new project and sort of using some ideas which we talked about yesterday in Hack Central. So let's get to that. As always, guys, you guys know who we are. My name is Ross Nick. Hey, we're not gonna make a game. We're okay. gonna make a game. Yep, yep, you'll see what game it is shortly. And hi guys, what Oh, I'm sorry, what? Basic game or like a uh, like good game game? Just hold on a second and then we'll <laughs> show you. <laughs> just literally a second. All right, my my name is Lobdy, guys, and just like Rayan, I go to Kona High School as a senior. Exactly. It looks like everybody is excited. Oh, boy, just. All of us should just put on masks, like all four of us. You, Ryan, um, me, and Chase, and we should we should just put on the mask filter. Definitely, and it looks <laughs> like Chase already has the saying engraved inside, right? So that is good to know, Chase. And <laughs> there we go. All right, so guys, today we're gonna get started off with talking about our new project, which everybody's excited to know what that is about. Look at a finished version and then start talking about it. What's gonna be involved in making this project? Start even getting the bare bones of the project uh, laid out like we did last time. Start documenting a couple of steps and also um, creating some functions so that we have an idea and a path laid out for the coming weeks. But first we gotta know what is the actual project? Yep, okay. and I believe everyone yeah, here yeah. does have the code, so. Yeah. All right, so what is our project? Well, we are going to make tic-tac-toe with Tikinter. So there's two parts to this project. Well, creating tic-tac-toe, um, using logic to be able to play tic-tac-toe using Python, of course. And the second part that we did get from Hack Central from yesterday is that we're going to be making this project with Tikinter. And um, let's have a pop quiz here. What is Tikinter and what does it um, let us do? in Python. It has GUI in it. Spot on, spot on. Any, any Anyone want to add anything else? I think Chase was the only one there yesterday for Accent. Oh, so right. Chase yeah, is not yeah. a good idea. Chase is going to be helping out the class today when we talk more about this idea of uh, Tikinter. Yeah, definitely. So Chase did say, uh, say that it adds GUI. So what is GUI? It's a graphical user interface. Basically, um, what you see. So in this in the slides that Ryan is presenting, that blue, the, the project um, uh, text, the image of the tic-tac-toe, that's all part of the GUI. So basically, in Python, we're going to make tic-tac-toe, but we're not going to use the console or like just typing out our options um, to play tic-tac-toe. We're going to actually have a window um, with buttons to play uh, tic-tac-toe. And let's go on to see. Um, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just to, like Robbie was talking about, quick recap, everybody knows tic-tac-toe, right? We've played it a bunch. Everybody should know right here, right? You got the three basic three by three just, you got circles and Xs. You're gonna play, the goal is to get three in a row in either direction, whether that's a diagonal, straight down or straight across. So the idea of the game, you know, is sort of not a chase on a go, We'll do a quick speed run right here, Chase, okay? Let me, let me clear that out. Okay, you'll be circle, I'll go X, go. Ooh. Ooh. And that's- This is a four straw, that's not. four straw. No! <laughs> that's yeah, so funny. if you put it on uh, one of the four, you know, like, uh, how do I say it? Like one of the four middle squares that's like on the edge, it's a forced draw. If you put it on one of the edges, then it's a forced win, I believe. Oh, if the opponent doesn't play correctly. Uh, yeah, for sure. There's a bunch of strategy. Uh, Wait, I mean, I, we should learn how I to. I can't see it. I can't see it. I still see like the slides presentation. 
Uh, it just appeared. Okay, you know what? We can. You know, actually, we'll take a we'll take a two minute break and do something. I have an idea. You guys can get a chance to play some people. We'll do that in just a moment. Right before we should play, we should learn how to. Yes, that would be fun. Learn how to repeat that. Like learn how to make like chess. Yeah, chess for sure a much more complex project. I, I've done that. I've done that before. That's you mean chess? Yeah. Look here. Me and like a bunch of my friends. Nice. I'm pretty sure this is the link. I'm not sure. That that is probably the link. Yes, that is the link. Check yes. that out after. That's pretty cool. Like you said that I went through the first time. I think me allowed we were making chess back in uh, eighth grade. So that, that's pretty yeah. cool. Oh my god, that is that is such a coincidence. <laughs> I'm making chess in eighth grade and you guys did too. No, no, no. no. We did it. We, we did it. Didn't. Yeah. You couldn't even yeah, think about it. I mean, yeah. We made it like over the um over like summer break actually. So like between seventh and eighth. It was me and a few of my friends. That's like some because I have like a few friends that are like good with like graphical design and like 3D modeling. I'm uh, good with like HTML and JavaScript, and then some friends that are good with like back end. So we were just like putting like Python and stuff. So we put them together and made that. Well, that sounds awesome, Chase. I definitely have to look into that. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It, I only like really just designed like the base of the website, like just made like the different pages and stuff. It's still I don't really know how to make a game. So. Well, that's what we're here for, right? And yeah. Talking about that game of tic tac toe, how about we take a quick moment? We'll go into a couple breakout rooms and you guys can play an, an opponent real quick in one game. You guys should. Oh, actually, wait, you guys should not be able to because you guys aren't co hosts. So, what we'll do, we'll pull up a whiteboard and we can do some games, all right? So we'll make separate boards. You guys, can you guys write on this? Annotate. Can everybody annotate? Everybody know how to? If you click view options, just annotate. Oh yeah, yeah, if Chase can then. Yeah. So here are some boards. All right, we'll match you guys up. Ayush, Chase, uh, Rishi, and Ibuki. You guys wanna play? Sure, I could go a few rounds, you know, just to assert my supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So go ahead and take a quick moment to play. If we were doing this in real life, we'd probably have you guys come up. We'll have more okay, I'm the first one, so. All right, so Rishi and uh, Ibuki, you guys the first board. Okay. And then Chase and I use second board. Okay, nice. All right, I'm in. Uh, do you want to be X's or should I be, or do you want to be circles? I'll be X's and I want to go first. Uh, uh, wait, whoever's versing me? That's Ibuki, I think. Yep. Should be Ibuki. Uh, okay. Here we go. Ha ha. Yes, perfect, Chase. It's fourth draw. Dang it. It's first draw. No, it's not yet. No, for me. Yeah, you can still go. There's there are some ways to win. Yeah, no, it's fourth draw. If he makes that one move. And okay, just, yeah. I mean, if it's the... Or you uh, do, Chase. No, wait, I did it wrong. No. I You're supposed wrong. to put the third one. Yeah, where Chase just put the O. Yep. And there we go. We got a cast game, probably. Yeah, that's the problem with tic tac toe. There's like, you can force draws in many ways. Yep. That's why you got to know where and when to play some pieces. But yeah, yeah we're getting work. a forced draw, too. Yeah, it's forced draw after Chase puts the, or you put the X. Yeah. I win. Yeah. See? How? <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing with Hecto. i think like majority times some there has to be some stat explaining how it's probably a draw most times but it's still fun to make and has a bunch of concepts which we can review and talking about this game we'll take a quick moment we'll check out the finished version of our project and then afterwards what we're going to do is open up our coding link get that shared out 
and then we'll start actually documenting some of the code. So without any further ado, how about we take a look at the final product, which we are going to be making in the coming weeks. All right, can you guys see that? Yes. All right, so you guys can probably see if you were here at Hack Central, you're probably seeing, wait, why, how is, what is this the top? Like, isn't the stuff we usually do occurring down here in the black area, the console, right? Well, yeah, usually, you know how Mastermind, we had everything text. Yeah. This, that is, um, what do you call that? Yeah, I forgot what you call it. Console. I've used it. No, that's not the console. The console is the thing, the black thing. The shell? The shell. No, they're both the things on the bottom. There are two hey, things. Remind us what is this word, that your favorite word. What is this at the top? GUI. It's the GUI. No. Yeah, it's the GUI. No, yeah. it's the GUI. <laughs> it's the GUI. You don't say GUI. Always the GUI. Yep. AKA Once a GUI, GUI ne always a GUI. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> AKA the graphical yeah. user interface, guys. Remember, and essentially, you guys can see this is how we're going to play the game. We're going to have circles, O's. We're going to be able to play a game, place down uh, markers, have turns alternate. And also have the logic occur in the background where it's going to be checking if it's a cat, cat's game or if somebody's going to win. So right now, it looks like it was a cat's game. The match ended in a draw. And then we can restart once we hit OK. And say I purposely win for a circle, go in the diagonal. We see we get a window which says we have won. And you're probably saying that, wait, this looks a bit outdated, right? Like this looks like some Windows Vista out here. This box is pretty old. Well, Tikinter is not the most updated, and it's why we don't really use Tikinter that much in the real world. You know, we, you guys have seen how, you know, Bob used it with her pathfinding algorithm. We're going to be using this project, which is cool to make. It's for fun and games. But usually, like, um, when we're making actual products, which are going to go on the web, we like to use a different language, which we've uh, sort of discussed about that being, we're going to talk about more about this Friday, too, like uh, Ayush was talking about, called JavaScript. But for today and for the coming weeks, we're going to be using Python and Tikinter to start working on this project. So with us being able to see the final product, how about we actually open up Replit and start creating our basic idea? Yeah, I found a site that's good. So we, and that's like multiplayer, like around the world actually kind of thing. So. That's pretty cool. Or I mean, we could like, like use like the inspect tool and then like see what how it's coded. Yep. Hey, Dane, thanks for coming in. We're just getting started on our new project, which is going to be a tic-tac-toe project. All right. So the link to who is Dane? What's up? Who's Dane? Uh, oh, that's uh. I'm Drake. For some reason, it's my dad's name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, why is he co-host? You made him co-host or something. Yeah, I accidentally was trying to do Lofty and I did Drake. Yeah. He came in at the exact time. That's what you call perfect timing. Yes, it is. So guys, get on over to the link and we'll get started shortly. Chases in the house. Yes, we can tell. All right, guys. So we know that firstly, you know, we're gonna have to be using a bunch of different modules. And like last time, you know, we started the first day off talking about just the basic stuff. So that's gonna be the idea for today. I just have a question. Why didn't you guys like ever change your profile pic? I'm the only one who has a profile pic in there. <laughs> I have a profile pic. You do? Nice. Yeah. The yep. These three don't. I guess we're just boring little coders. <laughs> it's Ryan, um, Lobdy, and whoever tallest. Yeah. Wait, who's tallest though? It's Chase. Ah, yes. Spoiler alert, it's the coolest guy you know. <laughs> yes, we already know Chase. Chase brings the swagger. All right, guys, so like last time, like I said, we're going to get started with just getting the steps out and having an idea for the coming weeks so that we know what we're going to be working on. 
And the first things first we're gonna do for this project is, anybody have an idea? The stuff we do at the way top of every single project. We're gonna label out our steps. Yep. And the first step is actually gonna be us importing, who can fill in the word, uh, importing something called? Random, sorry, uh, Tikinter. Yep. And what are those um, called? Like Tikinter, random? Modul modules. Yep, exactly. So our first step is gonna be just importing all our modules. And like Rishi was talking about, we're gonna have the random module when uh, deciding where the computer is gonna place their move. You know, it's gonna be a bit random, so that's going to be fun to code as well. And we're also going to have the Tikinter module in order to create the actual interface where the user can click and we can see their moves go on as well. After that, we're going to have to sort of start actually creating some code, which is going to allow us to create the buttons for our project. So we can say step two is going to be create buttons. And we're going to be looking into ways in which we can create multiple buttons so very quickly. Uh, Chase, you were there yesterday. You probably saw how we had a bunch of code, right? Where we could create separate buttons with our Tikinter examples. Sure was. Yep. Uh, but this time we're going to be using actually something different and creating our buttons in a way using for loops so that we can quickly have a three by three grid of buttons which can be clicked. Also, when we're going to be working with these buttons, we're going to have to keep track of where and what are the users, where are the users placing their moves? You know, it's a three by three grid. So there's nine possible options where moves can be made. And this is gonna take us into an interesting conversation next week about two dimensional arrays. At this point, we've learned about um, single arrays. Uh, anybody in the class who wants to remind us, what does an array do? It's a string of function, like a string of words and everything, or a string, like a list. It's a list of things and if you print it, then it'll print out every item on the list. Yep, yep. Anybody you wanna write a, an array down here? Line 10, take a shot. Doesn't matter, it could be a, it could it. Be a numbers array. We'll put some random numbers inside of it. I know how to, like, I know how to, uh, write an array sorry not an array a dictionary but i don't know how to write an array uh yeah for sure so remember it's pretty simple we just have our variable which is going to hold the array so array holder we set it equal to and then remember these different types of brackets which are next to the letter p on your keyboard and then here we can enter anything which we would like now remember this is something which is called a one dimensional array well why is it one dimensional well because there aren't any rows or columns right it's only one linear piece of data, it's going left to right, nothing much more to it. Well, next we can talk, start talking about how the tic-tac-toe game, if you envision it, right, you usually have a three by three grid. Well, we can't really store everything in a three by three manner. You know, it's gonna be a bunch of pieces. So something which we're gonna start looking into is sort of using a two dimensional array, which represents every column. So we're gonna have a separate array for each column. And this way we can keep track of the different rows as well. So something to look forward to as we move on towards next week as well. Yep, looks like you guys are already creating some arrays. And once we have created our arrays and we know how and where certain, like say I place a piece in the top left-hand corner, we're gonna have to decide where in the array is that gonna be represented by. So that's gonna be something which we're gonna look into more next week, but just uh, unveiling our plans right now. Step four, guys, is then gonna be for us to see once the user has made their move, we're gonna have to check um, if there are any winners. Now on a standard three by three grid, who can tell me how many possible ways are there for the user to win? There are about, hold on. Three or five, four? Three five or four. Ways. There are five ways. Is it, which one is it? Five. five. So five, because we can go down, across, the other way across, the other way across, or the other diagonal, right? And the two diagonals. But then there's other ways. To... Oh yeah, okay, okay. Exactly, so what we're gonna be doing is gonna be creating a separate function which is gonna allow us to check if there are any winners. And the way we're gonna do that is using some ideas from the past like loops 
and uh, using conditional to see if there is a certain, like say we're checking for X's, right? We're gonna check if in all the possible scenarios, three down, three across, three diagonally, if there are three of the same um, characters, like a circle and O, then we know that that person has won. And our goal is for the user to win as many times as possible. And while we're gonna be doing this, guys, we're gonna be, have to keep track of Tikinter as well. A Tikinter is gonna be something which is gonna be happening all along. We're gonna be you know, creating some buttons. When we're clicking the buttons, looks like somebody is already importing the Tikinter module for us. Thank you. There we go. So Tikinter is gonna be one of the things which we're gonna be doing on the side. You know, We're gonna be creating the buttons. We're gonna have to make sure that only the person who's playing can actually hit a button to say I'm um, the circle character, right? If it's X player's turn, I shouldn't be able to just go ahead and click the circle button. So we're gonna have to check when we're disabling and enabling buttons. And lastly, then at the end, we have to start displaying. So we're gonna have to create some message boxes, which tell um, the user who won. Yep. Alrighty, so that is basically the plan. Although it looks a bit short, this is gonna be a bit of a longer coding project in terms of the code we're gonna be outputting, but it looks like we already got step one nailed down. We got to Kinter, we have random. And there's also actually, we can do a step one right now. There's gonna be one more module, uh, one more thing actually, which we're gonna import. Now this is gonna be something, oh, here we go. It's gonna be something from to Kinter. So it's gonna be import from, uh, import to Kinter. Go ahead, Rishi. So we're gonna do from Tikinter, but remember how we had that finished product? So when I won a game, we had this message box up here. This is something extra we're gonna use, which is gonna be something called a message box. So this is something new, which we haven't really talked about. You know, we've had modules in the past and we just straight up use those modules. But today we're using something a bit different syntax. We're saying that from the Tikinter module, we want to import this specific, um, a function or access to function, which is gonna make our lives easier. So instead of us just importing the whole module, we're gonna be using something specific from the module as well called the message box, like we just saw in order to alert to us who won the game. So it looks like we already got step one nailed down and that is gonna be it for today in terms of code. Next, we're gonna get started off by talking about how to create the actual graphical interface and also talking about two dimensional arrays and how we can use them. But since we do have a couple of minutes to spare, we can uh, see the difference right now between the 2D arrays. So like we just talked about guys earlier, if you have a one dimensional array, what are we gonna have? So say random numbers, right? Give me some numbers. Five, 13, and 27. All right, and just for consistency, we'll do uh, four uh, numbers. Oh, Rishi, I'm putting a whole bunch of numbers there as well like this. But next week, we're going to start looking into something called a two-dimensional array. And this will be an array inside of an array. So it's literally going to be an array inside of an array. And remember what I said earlier, it's going to represent those three separate columns, those three separate rows, and it's going to make our lives easier when we start coding. So we're going to have numbers inside of here as well. Yeah, Marishi, type in away some numbers there too. And the syntax you can probably see is pretty easy, but the way if we start laying it out, say we have three numbers, right? And we'll just do three arrays inside of one large array. How about that? Like this. The way these numbers are gonna be laid out are gonna be in this fashion. So they're gonna represent each of these boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And essentially we're gonna be using this 2D array to check using our for loops if anybody has made a winning scenario type of move. But that's just a little sneak peek for next week. And that takes us till the end of us having the groundwork laid out for this project. You guys should be excited. This is gonna be a bit of more of a step up from our mastermind project, going into some other skills as well, combining with Tinter. So hopefully you guys should have some fun.
the link if you guys are lost will be posted in the google classroom as always guys so i don't need to panic if you did not catch anything Alrighty guys, so that takes us till the end for today's project developing course. We have everything laid out for next week. Next week has started. We're gonna hit the ground running, start coding our Tikinter, the getting the GUI, like we like to say, get that laid out as well. And also start talking about these new things called two, the arrays. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to it. But remember this Friday, we have our video gaming hour, playing some Pictionary, talking about how that was made as well. So we'll catch you guys there. See you guys. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. Yes.